Hi, well, I'm Stephen Neshebat, and I'm here to tell you a little bit uh, about critical behavior of gases. And uh, to do that, um, we'll start off with an indicator diagram. And that's pressure on this axis, volume on that axis. And I've, I've drawn uh, some, uh, some isotherms. So these are lines of constant temperature. And um, uh, you're probably accustomed to, uh, you know, isotherms that are even uh, at a higher temperature here, which would follow Boyle's law, which would just be a, a simple uh, a hyper, uh, hyperbolic uh, function. But uh, now we're getting at lower temperatures here. And uh, as you can see, uh, this, uh, this uh, what would have been a Boyle's uh, isotherm has now developed a, a bit of a bump. Nevertheless, if you were um, following that gas as you compressed it uh, from high volume to low volume at a given temperature along an isotherm, what you would see is that the gas just gets compressed to a smaller and smaller volume and uh, well, nothing special you know, happens except that the gas just got denser and denser as you might expect. On the other hand, uh, once it reaches below this certain critical point, which I've drawn here as this kind of step with an inflection point, let's go down to this even lower temperature. Well, what's happened, what, what would happen if you were uh, compressing the gas that is going in this direction, compressing the gas, is that when you got to this very point right here, you would notice that a little bit of uh, condensate formed um, at the bottom of your container. And uh, as you compress it more and more, what happens is kind of interesting. The pressure doesn't go up anymore. Uh, it stays constant, but your, your, your act of uh, trying to compress the gas just produces, uh, converts more of the gas into a liquid. Until we get to this point when pretty much all the gas is now gone, you just have a little bit of liquid left. And uh, so that all happens at this one pressure, and that pressure gets a special name. It's called p vape. Okay, it's the vapor pressure at that uh, particular temperature or for that isotherm. Now, of course, once we've eliminated all the, all the gas, then uh, now this is much steeper because, uh, well, uh, if you try to compress a liquid, now the pressure goes way up if you try to press down on it. So that leaves this, uh, this, uh, this, this middle isotherm. Uh, this is called the critical isotherm, T critical, okay? And uh, it's characterized by an inflection point right here. This is where the slope is zero, but also the second derivative is, is zero. Um, it's the critical temperature. And as you can kind of see here, uh, that critical temperature, that inflection point, also corresponds to a critical volume. And uh, it also corresponds to a critical pressure. So it's a, it's a certain uh, point, and, and every gas has its own unique set of critical volumes, temperatures, and, uh, and pressure. Okay, so all, all gases kind of do this, but um, the precise point at which this critical point occurs differs from gas to gas. So I've tabulated just two of them for you. Uh, carbon dioxide has a critical isotherm at, uh, the, uh, at 304 Kelvin. The critical volume occurs at 0 0.094 liters, okay, just a little bit less than a tenth of a liter, and the uh, and that's on a per mole basis. And the critical pressure occurs at 73 atmospheres. If we're dealing with water, uh, the actual physical circumstances are vastly different. We have to go to a much higher temperature. Um, on the critical volume is a little bit smaller, and the critical pressure is also. Great, uh, quite a lot uh, higher. Uh, nevertheless, the same qualitative features occur. Um, we get um, we get this critical point below which condensation would occur along an isotherm. Okay.